At least 10 people have been taken hostage by rioting inmates who've taken over a Brazilian prison. Armed with knives and sticks, the prisoners at Londrina State Penitentiary threatened to throw the hostages from the roof of the prison. And there's no health care, and I'm spitting blood basically, and the wounds don't don't stop bleeding. Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Blood on the Razor Wire TV where we bring it to you real and we bring it to you raw. Today I don't know how long we're going to have our guest. His name is Boris. He's in Colombia. There's been a lot of things going on over there in that prison where people are being killed. It's a dangerous place. These brothers are starving. Um, some of the security people were, were killed over there. We got some pictures of all of that. Boris, tell the people your name and, and how much time you're serving in prison there in Colombia. My name, my name's my name is Christian Camilo Gonzalez Rodriguez. They call me Boris Rojo here in Colombia, which means red. I'm doing 37 years for two homicides, kidnap charges and weapons. And this is where we are, bro. Combita. High security in Bojaca, Colombia, brother. And you grew up in London, right? Did you grow up in London? Up in London, yeah, in Labrook Road, brother. In, in, in Grenfell Tower, yeah, the tower block that burnt down not long ago, bro. Tell me a little bit. Tell me a little bit about that prison there in Colombia. I know you sent me some videos where you you got stabbed there, right? Brother, well, recently, since the twentieth of, of July of twenty twenty, there was disturbances, riots that led to basically conflict with the guards. Um, the towers basically shot at us, killed a lot of people. We reacted in in a bad way as well we burned down the jail a lot of people got injured since that date we we have no no guards here we have no personnel no no like no staff basically no medical staff no impact they're, they're the people in charge of the prisons in colombia what we have is free security rings surrounding the place just to keep us in but Right now, the authority here is us. You hear me, brother? Um, I don't know if you could, if if I've told you before, we got the control of the, of this wing when the riots happened. And since then, look, bro, there's there's no one about me. It's just us. You hear me? So you say there's three security rings. That means that the military are outside the prison. There's no guards inside the prison with you guys, correct? There's there's, there's Yes, sir. There's three security rings. There's one with military personnel, which is the only one we can see. So if we go down to the gate, the only personnel we can see is military vehicles and soldiers. And after that, there's two police security rings. And how to stop people from getting in and getting us out or us escaping. And so how are you guys eating there? Is there are you guys getting food? Bro, um, they open the gates every Friday and Saturday on the third security ring. The police have received basically our family members, friends, bring food to the gates, parcels. They get searched, they get disinfected because of the COVID virus. And they get, well, we like a committee, the people that run each wing, there's, seven, there's eight, eight wings. This is Patio Siete, number seven. Um, us as the committee that have control of this wing, we go down. We bring up the trolleys and we hand out the boxes with, with everyone's name. In about two hours, we're going to be doing that. Are there some people... We're just waiting, basically. Are there some people who don't have any food? Exactly, brother. They, they, this wing, because we're the committee that have control on this wing, we try and... We, 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 we don't try and just keep the power by means of, of violence or by scaring people. You get me, bro? We, we try and keep, like... Uh, a certain decent lifestyle for people, you know? 
Oh, here we, we offer people jobs. We've got restaurants. I can take you down in a moment and I'll send you some videos. We try and maintain the system basically with for people to earn their space, you know, earn their earn their peace of mind in here, B. So there's people that haven't got food. We we with what we collect and with what we earn in the restaurant, we we pay them to do cleaning jobs, to to hand out antibacterial sprays, stuff like that, bro. Look, as you can see, this dude here, man. You get me? That's a perfect example. We we have no cleaners here. No one. If we if we don't pay him, the dude ain't gonna clean the hallway. You get me, bro? I understand. So as you can see. Exactly, brother. So the, the dude gets paid a, a, a wage, which we try and we, we we people that have cell phones, we we sell phone signal with the little modems I've showed you before. So, so the boss man, I can't show him, but he's he's, he's the guy in charge here. You get me, bro? I'm part of the discipline team. So boss man basically maintains these 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 businesses, these phone signals. He sells these things to maintain dudes like that to help us out. Cause that's a perfect example. That dude ain't got no family. He ain't got no one to bring him nothing. You get me, bro? I understand. So the guy earns his keep. You get me same way I do, B. I earn my keep by by putting my chest on the line. You get me, bro? And keeping keeping our authority strong and then discipline, bro. Do you have Everyone a? Everyone plays their role on this wing. There's example of wings here that have no rules. Uh, we we don't allow strong drugs. We don't allow no crack, no bazooka. We don't allow heroin. There's, there's wings where they just seven. If if you ain't got how nothing, we we. Well, I'm, I'm proud of the system we've got set up. You get me, bro? Yeah, I understand. In, in, in any other wing in Combi, that no one lives like they live on this wing, brother. The rest of the wings are still just. So Boris, let me ask you this: You sent me some pictures, and there was a guy with his throat slit. Was he one of the security people, or was he another prisoner? He was another prisoner, brother. Why was he killed? Uh, there's, there's been a lot of deaths here, man. There's been a lot of deaths here, bro. Um, before the prison was abandoned, the, we had a notoriety because this prison is famous for having guards killed and, and the, 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 the cartels were here, you know? Because they're still here, bro, but like, after the anarchy of the riots, money didn't mean anything, you get me, bro? So no one ran no one and he was just the strongest man wins, you get me, bro? I understand. That's why boss, man, he, he knew how to look after his people, knew how to... To get people on his side, you get me, bro. So the boss. Before that, it was just it, it, it was people dying every week normally, but after the riots, bro, it's just been life doesn't cost anything in here, brother. We 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 on a monthly basis have to carry out a body on this wing, and that, and we try and keep peace here, brother. But on a monthly basis, bro, the, the, the hunger, people's problems, people's sickness, bro, pe problems from outside. People lose their mind, B. Get me, look, me and my guy, me and my guy, we, we, we keep security on this hallway. You get me, bro? We're on security duty today, and yeah, man. Do you have a knife on you right now, Boris? But look, could you, yeah, B, we walk around with this, brother. It, this is what we keep our only way authorized to do this, B. What's the little Look at this one, B. That's a this is how we offer people a machete, B. We make them by cutting. Basically, we cut these little angles, man. We cut the prison up. You get me, B? I hear you. We break these up, man. And we, we, we. Or like I said, brother, we don't try and impose our, 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 our authority with violence always. But when it needs to be, we, we, we will put hands on, bruv, and keep keep people in their place. You get me, bro? Have you ever felt like you were gonna have to kill somebody in there, Boris? Brother, I'm serving, basically, I've got a process for, for a homicide in the last prison I was in. Um, I, I don't want to sound proud of it, brother, but it was, there's a culture in Colombia, brother, where two men have a problem. They throw two knives like the ones that I just showed you on the floor and and you sort out your, your issues. Um, that happened to me in La Moelo in Bogota, like three years ago. Um, and the incident went too far. I got stabbed twice in my chest. And basically, the dude, the dude, the dude passed away, brother. Um, but I was arrested for that. So I'm, I'm because of the riots and because of COVID, I haven't heard anything back from that. But, but let's just say uh, that's that's the one. That's the one I, I'll probably end up doing time for as well, B. But I can't say too much, man. But we do what we need to do. You get me, B? Yeah. Let me ask you this. It's, it's, 
it's us or them. You get me, bro? Yeah. So I want to ask you this, right? You like, like I said, there's rules. There's rules here. I can't just walk around hurting people and that. But yeah. But there's 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 conflicts, man. I'm part of an organization which we have a lot of conflict with with paramilitary people. Look, this is another example. Dude, dude has to bring water up. You get me, bro? Because the water, when it comes on, it only gets to the third floor. Dude ain't got nothing to eat either, so brings up the water and earns his, his space. You get me, B? I understand. But like I said, me and my guy, we're, we're part of the discipline team. We don't bring up no water and food, no always. We just, when when it's time for for problems and that, brother, that's where the reaction. You get me, B? So let me ask you this, Boris. I, I sent you some money so you could buy some food there. And I want to ask you a question about that. I sent you a hundred. Brother, you know what? Them, them hundred and fifty dollars, bro, will be eating for a month. If I move from here, if I move from this spot, we basically lose the signal. But I'll send you some videos or something. Yeah, bro. I don't want you to move. You blessed us, man. You saved us, B. We was. We, there's point. It's where the point place gets into a bit of a crisis because our families and our, our friends. Well, there's so much they can do. You know, the streets are hard as well. That's why what you've done for us, bruv, is just a massive blessing, bruv. Hard to put into words, B. Well, Boris... Yeah, bruv, we'll eat with a month for that, bruv. And let's say, let's say on our little family, there's, there's 16. There's 16 of us in the discipline team. And there's about another 20, 10 of us that are that are in charge. You get me, brother? That, 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 that basically control us. You get me, B? I understand. And control the dudes that sweep and the dudes that bring up the water. So... There's like 25 of us, B, and we'll be eating for a month with that, bruv. Do they respect you? I have no idea what you've done for us, B, but... Do, now that they got... Sometimes, look, that's when incidents happen. Because we was in a crisis with our food and that, and we was a bit low on recourses, and people start getting a bit up in the air, if you get what I'm saying. People lose their minds a bit, and, well, it's not good when that happens, brother. Nobody nobody wants it's to be hungry in prison. You think Say that again, B. Nobody wants to be hungry in prison. Nah, B. And uh, at the beginning, it wasn't it, the hunger. Like someone my age, like I've lived with hunger, B. I've gone five, six days without eating. But you live, you get me, brother, with a bit of water, a bit. But there's elderly people in here, brother. That's the pro A lot of deaths at the beginning, when these people abandoned us, there was no food. Like, literally, no food, and they hadn't come up with the system of opening the gates. It was just basically keep them nutters in there. And if we went near the gates, they shot us, and they killed 25 of us. You get me, bro? On 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 that night, B. So it was just we was just here, bro. And there's elderly people here, apart from from us. You get me, bro? And there's ill people, and there was just bodies everywhere, bro. We we weekly we was taking down five six bodies to the front gate for them to take them out because they they were saying that that virus was getting people as well. We didn't even know what was going on, but now that a year's passed, we've heard that a lot of people passed from from weakness. The, the hunger, you get me, bro. The lack of protein and shit, and the elderly people were just passing away. You get me. I understand you 100%. Let, let me ask you, how much time... Let me show you a little bit, man. All right, go I ahead. I can't really move from here, but... I don't know how much... Man. You might you might die out on us. This is the prison. Say that again, bro. That's the prison that you just showed me. Yeah, yeah, that's Combita, bro. Combita, Colombia, man. One of the, the, the high security prisons in Colombia. This place was set up for the cartels after Escobar. Apparently... After teaching by Lara's man, and my guy's gonna go do his duties. He was just standing there with me for a while, but he's got to, he's got to patrol the the path. Do you get me, B? Yeah. Sometimes people do sneaky shit. <laughs> if 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 boss man don't see us being alert, bruv, we get we get told off. You get me, B? Yeah. But um, the, yeah, B. This prison was set up after the the, the Pablo Escobar days, B, because the other prisons were just not prisons, bruv. People are running around with with fucking cars and horses in jail leaving and entering. So this was Plan Columbia, it was called. It was set up by, by the USA, if I'm not wrong, bruv, after the, the, the Pablo Escobar incident to, to, to house the Cali cartel and, and people like that. This was meant to be an organised American system prison. You get me, B? I understand. But it obviously hasn't, <laughs> it hasn't worked out for him, bro. So, Boris... I'll show you again, look. People try and maintain just playing football and shit. You get me, B? We, 
we try and keep people's spirits up, man, because we, we know what we know what, what Havoc looks like. And anyone that says that they love Havoc, bruv, is just absolutely nuts, bruv, because uh, I don't wish what we lived in them days, bruv, on anyone, B. Get me, B, we went through some shit that's hard to explain, man. Certain shit I can't even speak about ever. You know them ones there, B? I understand you. I'm going to ask you a question, Boris, if you can hear me. After I sent you the money and you got the food that came in, were people happy? Were they like, thank you, Boris, thank you? Bro, listen, because people are busy, but later on I'm going to get the fellas together. And they told me, because when we wake up, first thing in the morning, there's there's a night shift, there's a day shift. Do you understand? So people are posted, certain people are sleeping. But later on I'm going to get everyone and they're going to give you a thank you, brother. Copy. What you've done is not just for me, B. Like I said, man, there's like 25 of us. And, and, and in turn, bro, apart from us 25, if we're good, the rest of these nutters are good. You get me, B? Because if we're not good, bro, this whole place just falls apart. You get me, bro? I understand, but you Boris, listen for me one second. It's not about me, man. I did it because you guys were in there hungry, man. And I know what it's like to be in prison and be hungry. So that's why I sent you the money. I'm going to tell people on here, if they want to donate $5, Five dollars. We'll put a thing together and get you know get you guys some money for next month for some more food, man. I want to help you out if I can, man, because I understand oh, the struggle, bro. Bro, listen. Like I said, when once this is cool is over, I'll make videos and I'll show you exactly what we do with everything, brother. I'm I'm proud of the system we've got. You get me, bro? The way we 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 invest things and 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 the results we get, bro, because it's not just about scaring people, it's not just about keeping people in line with knives and shit, nah, you have to earn people's respect, and we have to respect them as well, you get me, B, and like you just said, man, hunger is, if you calm a man's hunger, the dude, the, the humbleness is, is just amazing, bro, you get me, B, if you just be humble in life in here, bro, we keep things calm, but when... I've seen it, man, and it, it, this week, if it wasn't for you, brother, we was going down that line, man, because the situation was looking a bit dark, B, to say the least, you get me? Yeah, I'm, hey, I'm sorry that you got to live like that. How much time do you have left, Boris? Brother, to be honest with you, I'm being called right now. Me and the dude that was here, we're meant to be looking after our, our, basically our, our, our boss, man, you get me, bro? We're meant to be standing outside his cell because... We've even seen that, bruv. People trying to trying to take over wings and stuff, bruv. And we've we've had to fight this with with our nails, with shit, with whatever. You get me, brother? Doing whatever by any means just to keep control of this place, B. So that's why poor boss man has us. You get me, B? Yeah. Go ahead. If you gotta go, you gotta go. I want you to stay safe. It's all good. Hey, brother. God bless you, B. You too, brother. No, B. All right. Be safe. So blood on the razor wire TV. That was Boris. Boris called. He's a, he was a fan. He was sitting in his cell. He's got a cell phone there in Columbia in prison. He's sitting in his cell, and he comes across Blood on the Razor Wire TV, and he reaches out to me and says, hey, man, I like what you guys are doing. I also had another partner that was in uh, Fort Dix. He's on his way home now. He was running Convict Life. Boris had seen Convict Life, um, and he reached out to me. Boris reached out to me and said, hey, Chad, man, I really like what you're doing, and you know, I like the message that you're giving to the youth, things like that. He said, but I want to send you some videos and show you what's going on here in Columbia prison compared to the United States prisons. He said, I know they're dangerous over there too, but this is full-fledged, outrageous, out of control. And he sends me these videos of these people that are murdered, you know, some, some of the cops, um, some of the prisoners. Like he said, they were shot at the gates. When COVID happened, they felt like they were being oppressed, that people were dying. They had no idea what was going on. They were taking prisoners out daily, dead in body bags. And the people started demanding, hey, what's going on? We want medical attention. We want help. And they weren't getting it. And because they weren't getting it, they rebelled. And they started lighting the jail on fire. They were attacking the cops. The cops were fighting back. And they had to retreat. And when he talks about the security detail, the three rings, there's three layers of security outside the prison because there's no cops in the prison. There's no guards in the prison. There's nobody manning the cells. And it was total chaos. And you know... People don't understand that. If there were no cops in the United States in prisons, what would happen? Would it be total chaos? I guarantee you it would. I mean, some places you would find people that step up and become leaders like, you know, they did there in Columbia. And Boris is when people had stepped up and said, hey, look, we got to change this because we have to stick together. We have to come together. And that's something that people should think about, right? Together we will conquer as one we will fail. 
So together they ended up getting some kind of normality over there. It, it, you know, things got a little bit normal, but they're still struggling. There's no medical attention. There's no food. There's no, you know, there's no supervision. You see what you see the knives that them guys had? Do you see the machete that his partner had? I mean, these guys are literally fighting for their lives. Like these guys are literally trying to survive. And the security rings outside the prison so they can't climb over the gates and just run away. If they do, what happens? The military shoots them on sight. I mean, they don't have rules and, you know, regulations like they have here. But that's prison, man. That's, that's a Colombian prison where there's total mayhem, where things are just absolutely out of control. And, you know, he had, he had told me, you know, that yesterday was the day that they opened the gates. And I said, what the hell do you mean open the gates? He said, that's the day that your family can actually bring food. And, you know, those of you that are tuning in, you might know that in Colombia, people are poor. It's, it's, it's a messed up place. It's, they're poor there. So a lot of the families don't even have food for themselves, let alone to bring food to the prison. So I offered to send $150 to a family member over there. She went and bought the food. He's going to send us some videos. Maybe I'll put them up as shorts, you know, showing the food that they bought. But that's the thing about prison. Food, man. Food comforts people. And the food has progressively gotten worse in the United States, right? And you heard what Boris said. You know, it humbles people. So by sending them $150... And they bought a bunch of food. I told him, hey, man, make sure you get some chicken. He said, we're just going to buy rice and beans. I said, get some chicken. I'm going to put a video up and ask people to donate, man. I'm going to ask you guys to do that tonight. If you support Blood on the Razor Wire TV, you can cash app us $5. Let's put something together for them guys, $150 to $200 next month so they can get some more food, man. Do you know what it's like to be hungry at night? I do. I know what it's like to be in the hole for months upon months. When I was in the hole in USP Polak, one of the worst holes I was ever in. I knew what it felt like to go to bed hungry at night. I know what it felt like to have your stomach feeling like it was touching your back. That's real, man. That's raw. I don't care that them dudes are in Colombia. I don't care that they're not Americans. They're starving, man. They're, it's not like their prison violence isn't like our prison violence. It's different. Yeah, they're stabbing with pieces of steel. Those are bone crushers, what he pulled out. But they're doing it for a different reason. They're doing it to maintain order. They're doing it to make sure the guys that are trying to keep things orderly are not attacked by the rebels inside the prison or other groups or other cartels. These people are starving, man. They're hurting. This is prison, man. This is real. This is raw. I had to do that interview off the iPhone because he couldn't click on the Zoom for some reason. We couldn't, we couldn't connect. So I did it from the iPhone, but I did it to bring you guys some exclusive content to take you inside of a prison in another country. And, you know, we got videos, man, and, and pictures, man. This is real. This is raw. I mean, do you really want to spend your life in prison? Is that the life that you want to live? Could you imagine being in prison in Colombia? You ever seen them shows locked up abroad? Probably don't see those parts where people are being stabbed, killed. It's dangerous, man. Fires, riots, people screaming, people panicking. No order. I mean, we've had some crazy riots here in the United States, the Attica prison riots, the riots in Ohio, I think it was what, Lucasville riots. You know, I'm sure there's been plenty over in California. But at the end of the day, think about this. We're all humans, man. We're all human beings. Does it really matter what color you are? Does it really matter what race you are? Does it really matter what country you are? Shouldn't everybody come together? Shouldn't we stop this stuff? Yeah, I understand. There's got to be rules and laws in place. Or else, you know, the world would be out of control, right? But sometimes, man, the sentences don't fit the crimes. People don't deserve to be treated like wild animals, man. I don't care what country you're in. It's dangerous, man. It's dangerous. I've seen people stabbed. I've seen, you know, dangerous knives. The, the type of knives that he had on him, not the big long one, that little one that he had, that bone crush, I had to carry those in prison. This is the only way that I felt semi-safe. And this, these are in prisons where there's cops, where there's guards, right? Where they put on the suit and tie and they're there for orderly running of the facility. Well, a lot of them dudes are scared too. They don't want to get killed. They're down there working for what? 25 bucks an hour? They don't want to die in there. They don't want to have their wife, you know, have to bury them or their sons and daughters you know, grow up without their father. Cats are scared, man. Prison is real. So real. And that's why we bring the things that we bring on 
Blood on the Razor Wire TV. If you watch this video all the way through, you know, the members videos, I'm, I'm going to put some of these Colombian vi uh, videos up on, on the members only. So go ahead and subscribe, man. Go ahead and I know it costs a couple of dollars, what, three, four dollars, nine dollars. Subscribe. You want real content? You want to see what's really going on in, in them Colombian prisons? The stuff that we can't necessarily show on ours? Go ahead, man. Go ahead and, and, and subscribe. Support the channel, man, because what we're doing is real, man. What we're doing is raw. And, you know, Boris had talked about the money that I sent him. I didn't send him the money for me or for glorification, man. $150 is nothing. It's, it's petty. It's petty to us, but it means so much to them. 16 to 25 people will eat for 30 days for $150, man. You want to chip in for the $150 we are going to send next month? We don't have to do it every month, but we can help make their quality of life a little bit better. And I don't mind doing it, man. Because I know what it's like to go to bed hungry. I know what it's like to be in a place where people are just absolutely going crazy, man. Carrying knives, wanting to stab people upset because they're hungry. I've seen people in the United States, man. I've seen a guy in Arizona stab a guy in the neck just to stab him. Because he wanted to go to the ADX and watch TV. Watch American Idol, he told me. There's some crazy ass dudes in our prisons too. But like I said, man, Blood on the Razor Wire TV, what we do is real. It's real, it's raw. Hit that subscribe button. Until tomorrow, we're out.